Hi right guys, well today we're going to be checking out a new NAS that Synology has just released. So this here is the DS220J. Now Synology are a household name in the network attached storage market. And while there are a number of other brands to choose from and that supply NAS units, this brand here consistently bring to market some of the best and most reliable options, as well as delivering that feature-rich operating system for users to get the most out of their network. DS220J is the successor to the DS218J, which as its name suggests, was released there in 2018. Being a J-series model, this is designed for those on a budget, so it'll be ideal for home users wanting to have a central location for their personal data, and suitable as an entry point into the world of NAS. Now, in terms of the pricing for this particular two-bay model, here we're looking at 169 in the US 150 in the UK so that marks it out as quite an affordable option really as a first-time NAS but do bear in mind that is diskless so you will need to factor in the inclusion of hard drives inside here so the plan is to do an unboxing then we're going to look at all the features and then have a quick look at the operating system and before we get into our review today's video is brought to you by ASRock and their X299 Creator. This board is ready for the latest Intel Core X processors and specifically targets designers who need high performance at their fingertips. Creator boasts the RMOS for its MOSFET solution, which delivers up to 50 amp continuous current for each phase. In short, the RMOS can dissipate heat very well and operate under intense workloads. Creator also comes with 802.11ax, which is otherwise known as Wi-Fi 6, the next generation of wireless connectivity. This board is packed with features, and for more info, please check out that link in the description. Okay, well this is the box our DS220J arrives in. There really isn't a lot to say about this, as you can see, it is an eco-friendly box, meaning that uh, when you are finished unboxing, you can discard this and recycle it. The only thing I would say is it does have the serial number and the MAC address printed on there, so you might want to keep that. There is a spec label on the front, just detailing the CPU, the memory, and the capacity. And of course, we have the carry handle at the top. And then inside the box, we have the NAS unit itself in this fabric sleeve. And then a number of accessories, so we have the quick installation guide, a small 60 watt power brick, which takes the kettle plug, a black Cat5e Ethernet cable, some screws for the hard drive installation and securing the NAS together, and the bracket if you want to use 2.5 inch drives. Okay, so here is our DS220J, and for those of you familiar with Synology's previous J-series units, the external design here should be recognisable. When revamping certain models, the company sticks to the same theme each time, and so between this new model and the predecessor DS218J, there will be very subtle differences. So this is an entry-level J-series, and as such, it has that distinct white outer shell. With the high-end models, we get a metal enclosure, but since this is clearly designed as a budget option, it has a plus exterior and really there is nothing wrong with that. On each side of the NAS there is the Synology logo which offers the internal components a chance to receive ventilation. Underneath 220J we have some additional ventilation cutouts and four rubber feet which help to prevent the NAS from moving around. Now at the front of 220J unlike other NAS units we don't have direct access to the drive bays but we do have some LED indicators for status, LAN and hard drives. So as a quick reference, that'll help you to identify if there is a problem, so you can perhaps jump into the OS for further investigation. The power button is also on the front there. While around the back of 220J, we have a 120mm fan at the top that helps to flush out unwanted heat from those components and the hard drives. And then below that, we have two USB 3 ports for connecting up external devices. This is especially useful if you want to transfer data to a USB drive. It's just a shame that we don't have those at the front, because reaching around the back could be tricky, depending depending on where you have this unit situated. We also get a single gigabit LAN port to get this attached to your network, and of course below that, the power port for DC in to connect up with the power brick. Off to the side, we also get Kensington lock allocation if you want to fix this NAS into place and make it difficult for people to take off with it. Now to get access inside 220J, you're going to need to slide the left and right side of the unit apart. One side is just a plastic cover, while the other side has all of our components and the hard drive trays. Now on the higher end units, we're able to actually see the hardware configuration, but with the J series, this is covered up as you can see. But with this model, we get the Realtek RTD 1296 CPU, which is quad core and it operates at 1.4 gigahertz. 
The memory comes in the form of 512MB and we get DDR4. Comparing that to the predecessor 218J, we get a nice upgrade from a dual core Marvel processor running at 1.3 and DDR3. And so the spec of 220J will be ideal for a home server where you want to share photos, videos, documents, just the usual sort of personal data. And it's also a great beginner unit for anyone wanting to jump into the world of network attached storage. So to install the drive, all you gotta do is place each drive onto the shelf and connect up the SATA ports, and then you can secure the drives into place by attaching the supplied screws. There is also a bracket if you fancy installing a two and a half inch drive. All right, well, I'm now gonna run you through the software just to give you guys a bit of an idea of how the process works and how to get up and running. And so there are two different methods to configure this unit. In the past, I've shown you via the Synology Assistant, which is a desktop application, and that scans the network, allows you to manually load in the operating system. But today, I'm gonna to be going for another technique, which is more of an automated process, probably a bit easier for you to perform. So, install a drive into the NAS, connect the ethernet cable along with a power, hit the power button, and then load up a web browser and type in find.synology.com. Now if this doesn't work, then you will need to perhaps log into your router and make sure DHCP is enabled just to make sure that that NAS has been assigned an IP. And another side note, if you do have VPN running in the background, you may find that the web page will just hang and nothing is displayed. I had to temporarily disable mine in order for this to load up. And so on this page, it will detect the NAS. And if you just click connect, and obviously you've got the license agreement that you need to uh, agree to. And then the next page, just need to click setup. And obviously you can do the manual uh, version where you actually download the DSM file directly from Synology. But if you go to install now, this will download it. Obviously this is the web assistant, so it connects uh, to the internet via your connection. So you do need to have an active internet connection. And you just click install now. Bit of a warning there just to let you know that it's gonna obviously erase any data which is on your hard drives. And then obviously it goes through the process, it formats partitions and downloads that DSM and makes various configuration options for you. So I will skip this section just to speed things up for the video. Okay, and once you've been through that process, uh, the NAS will reboot and then this is the page that we'll be faced with. Uh, so you just need to give it a name I'll just call it uh, 220J and um, let's put in some credentials here. And click next. So the next page is Quick Connect, which allows you to access the NAS from outside of your network. So if you're overseas, for example, on holiday and you want to get quick access to your NAS, this basically handles all of the port forwarding and it's just a you know a quick ID that you need to put in, your username and password. Uh, so that is extremely handy in that situation. But for now, I will just click skip. And again, a similar sort of thing where this is gonna pre-configure some of the more common applications and packages. And we'll just skip this for now, but those are some of the common packages that you can see. And then on this final page, we have the ability to share the device across the network uh, via find.synology.com as we've done. Uh, so that might be a good thing to do. Obviously, there are terms of service and privacy statements there that you might want to read just to make sure that there isn't anything dodgy going on in the background. Uh, but if we click go, this will boot us into DSM for the first time. Uh, device analytics. Now, this is obviously going to be dependent on your standpoint on privacy. Uh, for now, I'm just going to select uh, Remind Me Later. And then we're into the DSM operating system. Now, as with all software, when you first install it, there's these tips and this kind of tour through different uh, features. And you can just click through these. First thing that I'm going to talk about is this little dialog box, which usually appears in the bottom right corner. This is a really handy thing to have on the fly. You can just get access to it and obviously see the resources, see what's being accessed. And you can actually add different things here. So your storage tells you obviously your maximum capacity and what's being used. Connected users, that's handy if you've got multiple users. Obviously, I'm already logged in as the admin. Um, but you know, if you've got multiple users here, say five or six people, it's handy to be able to see who is actually logged in at what times. Okay, I'm just gonna go through the basic functionality, the basic features that you guys might find in DSM. If this is the first time you've seen this operating system, perhaps you've never used a Synology NAS before, 
this is a nice introduction as to you know the kind of things that you might find. So first of all, let's just go up to the top right corner and we'll click in the personal section. This has got our account information. You can see down the bottom we've got the two-step verification. This is a common thing nowadays for devices, an extremely good thing to have because it creates that extra barrier just to prevent people from accessing your account. Inside there we've got the account history as well, uh, login history and things like that which is extremely handy to have if you just want to keep an eye on things. And then into desktop, we can actually customize the way our interface looks, perhaps uh, tweak the, uh, the, the wallpaper. At the moment, it's just the standard Synology default wallpaper. Um, if I go into here, we've got these predefined ones which they've already loaded into the, to the operating system itself. However, we can actually choose our own. We can drop them into a folder if you've perhaps got uh, some photography or anything like that you want to show off or even you know, you've got your favorite wallpaper, you want to take it from Windows into the DSM, then you can do that as well. So I've just selected this one and uh, you can see in the background there, it has changed. So that's just, you know, personalized it and customized it to what we want. Now on this desktop, you can see we've got three icons. I just want to go into the DSM help just to show you that. This is a massive library and if you need any assistance with anything, you can just type it in and it searches the knowledge base and you can look at different things so for example we've just put in RAID and it tells you what each RAID version actually stands for, what it means, what, what it will do for your setup and so it's extremely useful and I've used it on numerous occasions for simply you know upgrading to larger drives, what it involves and that is a, a, an extremely handy thing to have and it doesn't just you know, cover the basic stuff, it goes into quite a lot of detail and is very good. Next, let's go into the control panel and you can see in the top right corner there we have basic and advanced mode. Now in basic mode, we have those options available. You can see just how many extras we get when we click on advanced. So that's great and we get the option there down at the bottom, extra features like terminal so we can access those. Those are kind of administrator type features but good to be able to reach out to those in a quick and easy way. So we're just going to go into some of these just to explore and just to see what they offer. In the shared folder, obviously we haven't set up anything just yet. So what I'll do is I'll create a shared folder. Um, we're just going to create a shared folder, we'll call it Vortez for now. Uh, we can say the main folder for NAS. We can have it appear in network places when we access it from Windows Explorer. And we have the ability to have a recycle bin on the actual device itself. So that is on by default. If we go next, we've got encryption. Now this is just gonna give you extra peace of mind. It will encrypt the drives. It does affect performance somewhat, but uh, if you do encrypt the drives on your NAS, then that means that if someone does steal this device, then they're not gonna be able to take those drives out and access the data on them. So obviously encryption gives you that extra peace of mind, extra security, and it is worth doing. It does, as I say, affect performance slightly, but uh, that's kind of like the trade-off that you expect. And then just apply, and that will create our shared folder. And on the and on the next page we have the permissions. So this is all of the users which currently exist on this NAS. And for example, if you wanted guests to have no access, then you can obviously tick that box there. And there is our folder. Now you can access that directly from Windows Explorer in Windows 10 or whatever operating system you're using. Or you can go into, where is it, file, I actually think it's a package that you need to install, just one second. Yeah, it's file station. So if I just update that. So that update for file station has complete. You can see on our desktop now we've got this icon for file station. And if we go into it, you can see we've got our shared folder which has been created. And we can create folders within this, we can upload files, or we can go to Windows Explorer, 
and you can see our folder is there, it's got the recycle bin. So you can, you've got two options there, you can either do it via Windows or you can go into the operating system itself and dump in your files and folders. If we just go back into the control panel, we're just going to have a look at a few other options that are available. Users, we've obviously seen these already. User groups, now there are three groups which are already created and you can create your own. But you know, if you've got more than say one or two users, you want to restrict where certain people go into certain folders or whether they can create certain files, then it's a great thing to be able to do that via the user group. If I just click on the one of these here and then go into the options, you can see you can do it via application, so allow or deny certain things, and you can also do it via the IP address as well. And then back into our control panel, we've got the quick connect. Now, as I described on the DSM installation page, we uh, we actually skipped this particular feature, but you can actually go back into here and create it. If you missed that page, you perhaps decided that that stage you didn't want to do it. You can go back in, you can create this, you just need to click on this link here and uh, create your Synology account and then enable it. Just going to jump into hardware and power. Now, first of all, if we just want to go into the power schedule, this is great because by default, our NAS is 24 seven. It's going to be on from morning to night. It's never really going to switch off unless we actually do it ourselves manually. And that's perfect for most users. Uh, but if you, for example, want to switch your NAS off at midnight, and then have it restart at say 6 a.m. Those are the you know the hours that you typically have the NAS on. You accessing the data, then you can create a schedule for that particular session, and that's perfect for a lot of people because they're not going to be using it overnight. But if you are using surveillance station in that you're going to be using security cameras, then obviously you don't want to add a schedule like that, and that's something you really need to bear in mind because if the NAS does go offline, then your cameras are not going to be recording any footage for security reasons. And of course, if you go away on holiday, you wanna access your NAS and you've got a schedule like this enabled, then you're not gonna be able to access it at that specific time. So just bear those sorts of things in mind, but it is a great feature to be able to use. And if we just go into hibernation, by default, our drive is set to go off at uh, 20 minutes. So it's just gonna drop into an idle state. You can tweak that from 10 to five hours, or you can switch it off altogether. And then on the general tab, you would have seen that first of all, we can set certain things here, beep control. So if our cooling fan malfunctions or certain things happen you know, to the volume itself, the hard drive, then it's gonna alert you and you can enable that or disable it. Fan speed is a good thing to be able to tweak as well because the fan might be disruptive. If you've got it out on your desk, then you might want to enable quiet mode. However, if it's going to be locked away in a cabinet, then you might want to take advantage of full speed mode, especially if your you know, hard drive temperatures are particularly high. We have the LED brightness. So that's the LED that's on the front of your NAS, and you can change the brightness of that, or you can completely disable it. And last of all, I just want to go into the package center. So this is the software that we've got installed on our NAS. You can see here, this top section here are all Synology based and Synology created apps. So if I just pick out some of these just to show you. So we've got audio station, we've got download server, download station. Uh, surveillance station is also somewhere. There you go, surveillance station. So that is for your security cameras. And then down in the bottom section, these are all third party and there's actually quite a lot of companies which are designing apps and packages specifically for these Synology NAS. So there you've got web-based ones at the bottom here. So the one that I want to actually showcase is called Video Station. So if I just click on that and click Install. Okay, so Video Station has installed. If I just go into the main menu here, top left, you can see Video Station is there. And if I just go into Windows Explorer, you can see it's created this video folder. I've dumped in two videos there. They're both actually different file types, so MP4 and M4V. And if we just go back and go into video station here, and if I go into movie, you can see both videos are here. Now, <laughs> these are actually incorrectly displaying at the moment because Arrival is a mountain bike film. 
can see that is not the right thing there. And uh, Fast and Furious 9, that is actually incorrect again. So if I just click into here and go to Edit Video Info, you can see the date of it is pulling in. And you can change this here. So if I search the internet for Arrival, you can see it's pulling up all of this data here, all these different films, videos that are associated to that particular name. Now this is the one that I actually want here. So if I click OK, then that picture should change. Maybe it's just taking a while to obtain that. Uh, but you can see here all of the data and if I just go back actually into Fast and Furious, we'll do the same with this one as well. So this is the 2019 film, which is obviously not Fast and Furious 9, which has only just had its trailer debut. So um, if we go into here again and do search Fast 9. And there we go, it's found it, so that is F9 there. You can actually see there's a tenth film there in 21, and that's going to pull that data there, but obviously that's not associated to ours anyway. So if we go into here, you can see all of the cast, again the release date and uh, age certificate on that, and the summary of the video itself. And if we just go into sign that, you can see the picture's changed. And there we go. And we'll view this directly from Video Station, so we'll click play. I used to live my life a quarter mile at a time. But things changed. Call father now. We can also view our videos from a mobile device. I've got my Android smartphone here, I've got DS Video installed already from the Play Store. And I'm connected to the same network that our NAS is on. If I just go into here, we've got our credentials which come up, I've already filled those out. And you can see our two videos are there. And oh. Now if I just skip to different sections, you'll see just how you know quick it is. You don't have to wait for things to buffer. Jacob is Dom's brother. Your whole life. This is my world. Okay, well that concludes our look at the new Synology DS220J. Synology market this unit here as being suitable for a home server for centralized storage of photos, videos, documents, personal data, and it works very well for that very purpose. The configuration in here, which is that quad-core CPU, the 512 meg of DDR4, means that the hardware can handle the DSM operating system very well. And even when you've got multiple users accessing data, you're gonna encounter no problems there. Now we only touched the surface with this quick look at the operating system in our video today. It is extensive in its feature set. There are so many different things that you can set up and make use of. And best of all, Synology are constantly updating the software and improving that user experience. So as a first time user of a NAS, uh, for a basic file server that you can't really go wrong with this unit here, 169 in the US, 150 in the UK. So, are you guys considering something like this for your own network? Let me know in the top right corner by casting your vote. Thanks very much for watching today, guys. Do appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe for more content just like this, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.